next strategies. Now that we have these goals put into place, and you can determine any other goals that you want, what are the strategies necessary in order to turn these goals into reality? What strategies can we do to make it real? Number one is event strategies. You want to accomplish, get, get more leaders. You want to get more people rank advancing. So you have your company events. This is the foundation of everything. What's the goal for your company events? You need to map out your company events in order to determine how many do you have, where are they, when are they, and what is your goal for each one? How are you going to put that together in order to get more people to attend? Next is regional events. You might have a big annual convention and then some regional events. Maybe they're about educating your product. Maybe they're about recruiting. Maybe they're about recognition. Whatever it happens to be, how, these events are tools for you and strategies for you to be able to build ultimately. Sometimes the regional events you can use to get more people to attend your company events. Yeah. Next is local events. Now some of you... We've gotten a little bit lazy as a profession, just a little bit lazy. And we've, we've taken our eye off the ball just a little bit. Zoom is wonderful. I love Zoom. Skype is amazing. Facebook Live is spectacular. But nothing changes relationships like face-to-face -face interaction. Nothing builds belief like getting leaders in a room. If these three days were just streamed online at home for free, most of you would have stopped watching a long time ago. This is not what it's about. It's about the experience. So if there's not local events in your city, start a local event in your city. Even if it's once a month to get everybody together. Do an opportunity presentation. Do a little basic training. And do some recognition locally. Even if it's 15 people in the back room of a Denny's. It doesn't matter. Start. People will look back and remember that time. And then book a bigger one. Set a goal to create bigger and bigger local events to be able to support your overall goals. Guess what you're going to be able to do at those local events? You're going to be able to promote your regional events. Guess what you're going to be able to do at your regional events? You're going to be able to promote your company destination events. But don't think that Zoom is going to do it all for you. It's not. Zoom is for tourists. Zoom is for people who watch cat videos on YouTube. You think you got all these people watching your Zoom? They turned your Zoom on. But then their browser went bing and they're gone. You're still on, but they muted you a long time ago because they're scrolling on something else now. Get them in the room, we got something to work with. I'm telling you, every one of you should be hosting or attending a local event on a monthly basis at a minimum. You do that, it'll change the game. Next. Recruiting events. You can have recruiting events. They could be training events. They could be recruiting events. Training. And then there's events around the events. This is for local, regional, or company. The events around the events. I always did the events around the events. I got more results because the company invests millions and millions of dollars to host your conventions. And you don't have to, you can, you can tap into all of it for a few hundred bucks. It's so cool. But I really maximized it. And here's what I did every time. You can decide what you want to do with your events around your events. If there's multiple hotels around your event, we pick a team hotel, and we, we, we own that hotel. Everybody's checked in there. Every, the, the lounge is our lounge. Restaurant's our restaurant, right? We run that hotel during that convention. The day before the convention, I always got my team together for three hours the night before any convention started. And I got them prepared mentally. I got them ready to take notes. I got them plugged into the game. I got them understanding what their outcomes were going into this. They're going to play like a pro. 
And then we'd have lunches and little parties and stuff during the event. And then after the event, the most important thing ever was the three hours the, the morning after the event. If I was hosting this, guess what? Tomorrow morning from 9 to noon, I would have my entire team together in my own meeting room. And I would say, we learned all this stuff. Here's what it means for us. We're going to go do this and 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 let's go. I got more out of a, an event than anybody else I knew because I plugged into events around events. You can do the same thing. Same thing with regional, same thing with local. Maximize the experience. Somebody else is spending the money. If it's their event and you're just plugging in, it's the cheapest thing you could ever do. Get a meeting room. Oh yeah, I got to write a check. They got to write millions of dollars. It's just great to be able to maximize these events. Next strategy, strategy number two is your calendar. Events are one part of your strategy. Second part of your strategy is your calendar. Show me your calendar, I'll show you your future. Now in this, I want you to, every, every single one of you, this is a good time because all the calendars are out, right? I want you to get a calendar, a fresh calendar, at least a month at a glance calendar at a minimum. And I want you to mark in your calendar what are the naturally slow times for your company? Historically slow times. Kind of put a note. In January, it's usually a little bit slow. In August, it's usually a little bit slow. In December, it's usually a little bit slow. And just in pencil, mark down the naturally slow times for your business because during those times, you're going to need to put some campaigns and game plans, maybe even some events into those windows to be able to smooth out your year. When other people go down, you won't go down. The new year kickoff, kind of put a little pencil in. What can you do to get your people, new year, new you, let's go set a goal, let's go make something happen. How can you use the calendar to inspire your team to start strong, right? So mark that in your calendar. Valentine's Day, is there anything you can do around your product? or service or company around Valentine's Day that you can incorporate into some sort of a campaign? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't, I don't know. If there's nothing, tell everybody to take their sweetheart and go do something special. Just as a way to say thank you for supporting you, for supporting them for their network marketing business or whatever it happens to be. But use these little milestones um, consciously. Tax time. Great time to talk to people about the tax benefits of network marketing. Great time to talk to people. Use this as a reminder to talk about financial responsibility. Getting ready for summer. This is a season, getting ready for summer. Some of you have health or wellness type, fitness type. Getting ready for summer is a theme for those people to get yourself ready to be able to capitalize on that. Utilize that getting ready for summer push. You know, when most people think about starting to do a campaign like that around June, it's already over. You got to start thinking about it in February to have it ready. So you're not reacting, you're acting. Understand? School's out for summer. What's your campaign to get people inspired during this period of time? Or are you just going to let everybody just fall to the floor? and do nothing. Back to school, you can go back to work. That's another season in the rhythm of life that you can utilize to your benefit in your calendar. The 4th of July, independence, financial independence is another strategy that you can use inside of your calendar. Black Friday, Cyber Monday is something that you can plan for maybe even work with your company on to be able to maximize in your calendar. Christmas and New Year's. If you're in the retail business and are you in the retail business, yes or no? Yes. What's the biggest month for the retail business around the world? December. What's the worst month for network marketing around the world? December. For most people it is. Maybe not for a few of you, because you've been thinking about it. But for most people, you know what we think? People don't want to be bothered. 
People don't have any money during the holidays. Are you kidding me? They're looking for stuff to spend. Give them ideas to spend money on your products. Give them ideas to start getting ready for their next year because they're sick of their, their last year. Give them ideas in order to be able to do what they need to do to have a better life. So that's your calendar. Strategy number three, and we're going to go aggressive on this. Strategy number three is campaigns. We go, we go through this extensively in Beyond Leadership, but I'm going to go through this very quickly in, in this session with you. Campaigns are a thing that you do on top of your daily method of operation that causes people to take more action. It's like, how many of you have children? Okay. How many of you ever, ever had, well, I won't even ask you because I know, I know the answer. Most of us have had a time, all of us have had a time with our child when they're just fussy. They're just crying for no reason. They don't have a dirty diaper. They've got a full stomach. They're not sleepy. They're just, eh. And you gave them a toy three days ago. And when they first got the toy, they were really excited. Now you're trying to like get them to stop crying. Eh. So you say, oh, look, here's the old toy. And they go, eh. that's better. Right? So a campaign is a new toy. A campaign is, check this out. And they go, oh, here's a new thing. And they're excited for a little while, not forever. Your daily method of operation stays the same. Your little, whatever you do on a regular basis stays the same. But eventually people get tired of the same old thing. So you got to like freshen it up without changing the things that work in order to get more activity. So let's say for a moment that you don't have a culture of home meetings. Let's say people are doing Zooms or people are doing whatever. And you decide you want to, just for a short burst, let's say the month of December, you decide I want to use home meetings to spice things up. So we're going to send out a little training. We're going to have, show people a little home meeting kit that they can, you know, organize on their own. Here's an agenda for how to do a home meeting. And we're going to set a five home meeting in December campaign. And we're going to go out to everybody and say, I'm going to do five home meetings in December. I, we're going to challenge as many people as we can on our team to do five home meetings in December. Who's ready to do it? Let's go change our lives. Let's go liberate some people. Let's go have some fun. And just from the campaign, who's in, who wants the challenge, people are going to like me. If there's some recognition involved, really me. And all this does is you, you're not going to get everybody to do it. But what if you got 10% of your team to do five home meetings in December? Is that going to create more action than you would have had if you didn't ask the question? Yes. So takes a little work, takes some influence to get people to do things that they wouldn't normally do. But you can use these home meetings to say, oh, look, December, we're going to do the December to remember five home meeting campaign. <gasps> wow. Right? And we're going to have a little competition. Who gets the most sales out of the five meetings that they do? or the most recruits or the most customers or whatever it happens to be out of the five meetings that they do, we're going to have a little leaderboard and whoever gets, gets the most is going to have a merrier Christmas. And we're going to do this and this and this. Get a hundred people to do that and all of a sudden you got more activity, right? So campaigns could be home meetings. You could do a campaign around Zoom meetings. Instead of everybody plugging into one person's Zoom, maybe everybody agrees to host a Zoom and invite every single person in their world to come onto a Zoom on one day and they're going to do some amazing thing. Or everybody, you could do a 10 in 10, 10 Zoom meetings in 10 day campaign. You pick a, uh, the first 10 days of January are, are traditionally slow for you. 
create a 10 Zoom meeting in 10 day campaign and see how many people you can get to be a part of that. You understand? To start the year, and it all starts January 1st. And you gotta be, you gotta do all 10 to be part of the, the competition and the contest. And if you miss January 1st, if you miss any one of those days, then you're out. And whoever does it gets X. They'll do it for a certificate. They'll do it for two tickets to the movies. Just create a campaign to create more action than there would have been without you. Luncheons. This is one of my favorite things in the world. It's a lost art, it seems. But to be able to host a luncheon, business people love luncheons. On a Friday, it's usually the best day because they want to check out early usually anyway. This gives them an excuse. You hold a luncheon at a place where there's a restaurant, reasonable uh, menu, come up with a couple options, get a little side meeting room in that restaurant. The restaurant's happy to have the business. You tell you and your team, invite all your prospects to come to that luncheon at 12 o'clock on Friday. You welcome everybody. Everybody orders their one or two choices. You give a little 30-minute presentation with them and their prospects. They got a little time to eat and mix and mingle, and everybody checks out, and then you follow up later. But you can't believe the quality of leaders you will get out of a luncheon. You'll get such high-quality people from a luncheon strategy. Now, if you do one every week for forever, it'll get stale. So you might want to pick a month that is luncheon month. Or maybe it's the first... Friday of every month in your local market, you do a luncheon for you and your team. And everybody creates more action than there would have been. And you, you get an influencer in your team and they start hosting a luncheon once a month. And then they get an influencer in the, their team and they start hosting a luncheon once a month. A recruiting campaign. You can say, we're going we're gonna to do a five and five. Everybody's going to sign up and, and agree that you're going to recruit five people in five days. How, whatever we got to do, we're going to do it. Or you recruit 20 and 30 or whatever it happens to be. You pick it. Or everybody on the team is going to recruit one person in the month of December. Who's in? One. Just one. And we'll help you. And here's the step-by-step -step to do it. And people that have been sitting on the sidelines will go, you know what? I can do that. All right. I'll give it a try. There's training. There's a program to make it happen. So whatever you want to do. If you want to do a 20 and 30, do a 20 and 30. Right? Figure out what you want to do. Next. You can have customer campaigns. Adding more customers to your organization than you ever thought possible. Maybe you're, you're recruiting heavy, but you're customer light. And maybe you need to just do a customer campaign. Everybody's going to go get 10 customers this week, and that's all. 10 people that are not connected to the compensation plan this week. And here's exactly how you're going to do it. Here's the training. Here's the guidance. Here's the tools we're going to use. And here's the, the recognition we're going to do when people go make it happen. Here's all the stuff. Who's in? And the person out there that's bored or scared or whatever, they go, oh, that's the one for me. I've been waiting for one. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go make it happen. What is the influencer doing? creating action when there wouldn't have been action. That's all this is. Now, is that customer campaign going to work every week for the rest of your life? No. It's a blitz. It's meant to fit into a pocket. It's meant to be, maybe you do it right after, you know, right before your convention. Maybe you do it in a slow season. Maybe you do it a customer campaign around a holiday season where people are gift giving anyway. Whatever it happens to be, you pick it. You've got your calendar. I'm just giving you, I'm giving you a ton of ideas here. When we do this at Beyond Leadership, it's 50 campaigns that you can choose from and decide what you're going to do. All of these work if you do them. Most people are just doing the same old stuff. Everybody in your team's bored out of their minds. They're looking at you like, I'm sick of that toy you showed me four years ago. I know it's a Lego. Wow. All you got to do is say Batman Lego. And they're like, oh, how did they do it? Product sample campaigns. Some of you have products that are sampleable. 
you could do a product sample campaign. How many of you have products that are sampleable? Raise your hands, please. Okay, not everybody does, but those that do, what I will tell you is pick one and make that one a sampleable theme for a month. Sample that product for the month of January. This is the month we're going to take this product, this flavor, this version, whatever, and everybody's going to sample it to as many people as possible over the course of January. And then February, maybe it's a different one that doesn't get as much love. Maybe it doesn't get as much love in your organization, but it's an amazing product. You could sample that product for the month of February. Or maybe it's not every month. Maybe it's every three months you do one of these. You don't have to do them all, but you're going to put together a strategy here in order to be able to maximize your year. These are important tools. Understand what I'm telling you. These campaigns are important tools in order for you to maximize performance in an organization. Daily method of operation is going to get you so far, but the campaigns give you the juice to keep things moving. And in between the campaigns, you're going to fall back to daily method of operation, the basics, your systems, your tools. But every once in a while, you need to juice it. Every once in a while, you need it. You wouldn't have done those five home meetings in December unless you created the campaign yourself. So sometimes the campaign makes you do things that you wouldn't have done. Next, a rank advancement campaign. If you've got level one, level two, level three, maybe you come up with a level two rank advancement campaign. This month, we're going to do whoever gets to level two, we're going to do this. We're focused on this. A level three, level four, whatever it happens to be. Come up with some rank advancement campaign. And when you come up with a campaign, give them some training on how they're going to do it. Give them some guidance on how to make it happen. Provide some leadership in order to be able to get the most out of them. Take inventory inside the team. Who wants to participate? And then just go put your foot on the gas to make it happen. Social media, Facebook Live campaigns. You can use social media to drive so many of these things. Now, some people are not going to be prepared to do, to live on social media every single minute like others are. So you know how you introduce people who are not naturally inclined to social media is to get them in, to engage in a campaign for one week. Get them to do something on social media for one week and they go, oh my gosh, this was really cool. I can do this, right? So all these are is just distractions. They're a way, a positive distraction from boredom. You know, the worst thing in the world is boredom. This gives somebody something exciting to do, a short-term assignment. You know what people are craving? Please just tell me what to do. What's the assignment? Give me an assignment. I can have somebody who's disgruntled, somebody who wants to quit. You know, I just don't think this is for me. And I give them an assignment. Oh, before you quit, just find three people that you can put on the phone with me before you quit. They go, oh, thank you. I'll go do that. They just needed an assignment. They've been trained to be an employee for too long and it's too much stress to think like an entrepreneur right out of the bat. It's okay. Help them. International long distance campaigns. We talked about this with state to state, three city markets. You can come up with campaigns in your different international markets. I would highly encourage you to chase the business by the phone, not to necessarily travel there. You can recruit right from where you are. I built businesses in 60 countries. I only recruited three people outside of the United States in order to be able to do it. You can do the same. One day recruiting marathon. These are just ideas. See, see, see where my head is with this? This is just stuff that I've done. This is creativity. Could you come up with a one day recruiting marathon that started at 12.01 a.m.? And all we're going to do is we're going to plant seeds leading up to that. But this is the day when we are going to, every time we ring the bell and we recruit somebody, we're going to put it on a website. We're going to tell the world. We're going to post it on Facebook. We're going to just ding, 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 ding for 24 straight hours. 
We're going to have a leaderboard, see who recruits the most people over those 20, 24 hours. We're going to recognize the people who are joining the team over those 24 hours. We're going to do everything possible. Zooms and Facebook Lives and conference calls and everything, home meetings, everything we could possibly do for 24 hours to see what we can get. People will stay up for 24 hours just to be part of the game. You just got to give them an excuse. You got to give them some something. Inspire them. A one-day recruiting campaign can do that. Now, listen, these are just ideas. Take your imagination. Go to the next level. It's your business. Get resourceful. Find that third door. You know? Don't just go where everybody says. Get a little scrappy. Come up with something cool. Don't throw away your foundation, your daily method of operation, but come up with some cool stuff that complements that. Next, please. You could do prospecting by occupation. You could do a campaign that this month or this week, let's say, all we're gonna do inside the entire team is talk to chiropractors. Everybody's gonna, gonna find, identify every single chiropractor they know and we're gonna approach them with this particular presentation and share this particular product or service and that's all we're going to do. Maybe you pick another time and it's teacher appreciation week or something as a national holiday. And you just, all you're going to do is prospect teachers. All you're going to do is prospect nurses. All you're going to do is prospect real estate agents. All you're going to do is prospect mortgage brokers. Whatever it happens to be, you pick it. And everybody's going to make a list. And you know what that'll do? People say, I don't know anybody. Well, we're going to prospect chiropractors this week. Oh, I know three of those. All they needed was an excuse <coughs> to go talk to those people. Back to that list. Go back. <coughs> it's rebuilding. He's almost there. Here it comes. There we go. You can have a campaign to convert your home to a home that is, if, if your products are appropriate, convert your home into an ABC type home. Convert your home into every single product that can be converted in your home, convert your home. Have everybody in their teams do that. You can have a campaign around entrepreneurship. You can do an entrepreneurial event in your local market and present this as an entrepreneurial choice. You create an entrepreneurial event in your local market, people will come. Because people are curious. Entrepreneurship's sexy. Networking groups. People have used this as a campaign to grow their business. Networking groups. Big online events. You could do an online event and have everybody in your entire team connected at the same time in rooms or in living rooms, hotel rooms. Everybody connected at the same time, talking back and forth to each other and sharing an experience. Super Saturday events. I built a huge business on fly-in events. And here's what this is, the home office. I would fly people, I would tell my whole team. I built a huge business doing this. Here was the campaign. Guess what, most prospects are, business people are more comfortable getting on an airplane, flying to see somebody's home office and checking it out than they are going to somebody's living room and checking out the opportunity in somebody's living room. It fits their business model. So if you invite somebody, hey, I've been telling the company owners about you, they'd like to meet you, we're having a networking event at the home office, people are coming in to kick the tires, check it out, would you like to come to the event with me and check this business out? And what we would do is we would have people fly in Friday morning, we do a home office tour Friday afternoon with the whole group. Friday evening, we'd have an opportunity presentation at the hotel where everybody was staying. And Saturday morning, we would have a training session for what they would do if they decided to get involved. And then they flew home Saturday night. And we would have, we did this monthly for about 18 months. Then it worked so good, we stopped doing it. 
but we averaged between 500 and 1,000 attendees every single month at, for this 18-month massive momentum run we had. Home office tour, opportunity presentation, networking, hanging out, training in the morning, fly home. People would bring in three, four, five of their top prospects. They'd shepherd them through that process, and then they'd fly back home with great influencer-type people. That little campaign did so much to build belief of the distributors who went to the home office that hadn't seen it. Also, the people who were coming, the results that we got out of there was tremendous. I highly recommend it. Back to the list, please. Strategy number four. Strategy number four, team building. And now we're going to go quickly. Personal growth. What's your strategy for personal growth? What's your team building strategy for skills? Can you focus on one skill a month with your team? Could you focus on finding prospects in January, inviting in February, presenting in March, follow up in April, closing in May, right? Can you go through the cycle of skills within your organization to get your team stronger or just expect that they're going to do it on their own? The clubhouse concept, this is a strategy. Uh, I don't have time to get into it, but I'll tell you just really briefly. A few companies that I consult with and I work with, they have a, a mansion the company owns, and the top leaders bring their lower level people to that mansion for three days of dream building. And they basically rent the mansion from the company very inexpensively for those three days. And they bring in 20 people at a time. So imagine a level, you know, start at one and go up, a level eight or nine would bring in 20 level fours. And they'd spend three days training them and building their big dream and they're living in, they're in a mansion and they're swimming in the swimming pool and people go home just lit up on fire. So the clubhouse concept was spectacular, um, but it's a little bit more advanced and need more time to talk about. Family reunion type team building events. Once a year, maybe get your whole group together away from your company. Find a city, get together for a weekend and just have fun. A little bit of training, some fun, some team building, some camaraderie. Find a way to do that. Charity. You want to build your team? You want to build unity in your team? Come up with a charity drive with your team. Decide that you and your group are going to raise a million dollars for some cause that's important to you. And in order to raise a million dollars, you need 10 groups to each raise 100,000. And in order to do that, you need 10 people in each one of those groups to each raise $10,000 and come up with a strategy for those people to be able to raise the money. Provide a check on behalf of you and your team for $100,000, for $10,000, for $5,000, for $100. It doesn't matter. Come up with some charity drives to provide unity inside of your organization. It'll be tremendous. Now, I do have to tell you a couple things. We're going to continue with this. I've got a bunch of, I got to cover. Um, is it all right if we go to about 8.20? A little bit after the 8 o'clock? Because I've got a lot that I need to cover in this. And I hope you're getting a lot of meat here. I know it's heavy, but it's a lot of stuff. You getting value? And I have a special friend that's going to join us in a few minutes and going to kind of be a, a little surprise for you. So charity. Charity drives are big. They're really big. In addition to that, presenter schools. You want to drive? I talked about this the other day. Build the depth of your influencers within your organization. Create some presenter schools and teach people how to present within your organization. Teach them how to say the words. Create people who can communicate effectively. Give them the skills to do it. Give them a safe place to learn. Those presenter schools will build thickness inside of your organization that other people will struggle to copy. Think about how many great presenters you have on your team right now. And is that number acceptable? Is it in, in alignment with your goals? If it's not in alignment with your goals, you need to decide to thicken up that presenter skill set 
within your organization. Best way I know, fastest way I know is presenter schools. So I know I'm giving you a lot here. Some of you are like already like, uh, write it down. This is for you to take in the month of December and to create your 2019. This is heavy work. This is deep work. It's important work. But once, and you don't have to do it all. Let me just tell you this. I'm giving you a lot of things. This is like the all you can eat buffet. You don't have to eat it all. You could pick a few of these things and just do that and you're fine. You don't have to do all these things. Doing all these things is probably not healthy. Just breathe. And you can sort through later and say, oh, this one. I'm going to do this one. Oh, this one. I talk with my leaders and, you know, get together with your leaders and figure out which ones are going to work for you. And then pour that into the organization instead of feeling like you have to do everything. Don't get overwhelmed. If you get paralyzed, you're, you're putting on too much. Back up a little bit. Make it simple. Make it fun. Strategy number five is reinforcement campaigns. How do you reinforce these things that you're trying to do? Any of the campaigns that you're trying to roll out, any of the goals that you're trying to hit, any of the behaviors that you're trying to make happen, you need to reinforce the behavior. So one way to reinforcement is recognition. Sometimes it's the company that's doing it, but sometimes you need to do it. And sometimes recognition is just calling somebody and saying, wow, amazing job. Sending them a text message that's saying, man, that's fantastic. Congratulations. I'm so glad you got registered for the company convention. Maybe it's posting something on Facebook and letting the world know how awesome this person is on your team. Maybe it's sending them a letter. Maybe it's sending them a card. Maybe it's sending somebody flowers. Maybe it is sending them a certificate, buying them a cool journal. And write a little note in the journal how much you believe in them and send them the journal. Whatever it happens to be, something thoughtful for somebody who's doing the behavior that you're trying to reinforce within your organization. That's the key. Recognition programs to reinforce this stuff. Repetition. You want to reinforce something? You want to make it part of your culture? You got to pound on it. You got to do it over and 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 over again. You got to say, hey, the company convention's a big deal. And guess what? The next week, guess what you got to say? Hey, the company convention's a big deal. And the week after that, guess what you got to say? Hey, the company's a, the convention's a big deal. And the week after that, guess what you got to say? Hey, the company convention's a big deal. And then you get people giving you a look. They look go. And just from the look, you go, oh, I guess I pushed too far. And after five weeks, you stop talking about it. And because of that, after five weeks, your results start to fall straight down. Because somebody gave you the look. That was enough for you to stop acting. And let's say you ignored the look. Week number six, hey, the company convention's a big deal. Week number seven, hey, the company convention's a big deal. Week number eight, hey, the company convention's a big deal. And then one of your leaders goes, you got to stop. It's too much. You know, uh, you're a broken record. One person complains because they don't understand the big picture of what you're trying to accomplish. One person. And you go, what? Oh, maybe they're right. I don't want to bother people. One person complained. Oh, that, that probably means there's a hundred people murmuring about it. I guess I should stop. And you stop after eight weeks. And you lose the reinforcement of what it is you were trying to build because one person complained. Let's say you go past the one person and you do it for 12 weeks, you do it for 16 weeks, you do it for 20 weeks. And then three people have lunch with you and said, please, you've got to stop. It's too much now. And you go, oh my gosh, they just had an intervention. Maybe I pushed too hard. And you stop, even though it was working, even though you're getting results, even though good things were happening, you stop. Here's what an influencer does. They never stop. No matter what your people complain, no matter what people say, no matter what looks they get, they just keep saying, hey, the company convention is a big deal. And tell everybody just goes, I guess the company convention's a big deal. 
I better just buy in because they won't shut the hell up. <laughs> this is what's required. It's what's required. I'm telling you. Most people stop doing really, really great things because one person gave them a look. Incentives. Are there incentives that you could come up with that would help you to reinforce? An incentive is anybody who does this gets. Incentive is available to everybody. Everybody who gets to this level on our team gets this. Anybody who gets this done in the month of December gets this. It could be a little thing. Some little cool little thing. Whatever it happens to be. It doesn't need to be big money. But give them something to aim for. Something to get in exchange for their behavior. Now, they're going to get way more from the company. But why not give them that extra little incentive? Most people are waiting for the company to do it. Don't wait for the company to do it. Next, please. Contests. This is when there's some winners and some losers. There's a first place, second place, third place. It's different than incentives. Incentives, anybody can get it if they do it in the month, you know, or within whatever the period of time is. Contest is the first 10 to do this get A, B, C, D, E. And the first one to get it gets the big prize. Second one to get it gets the second prize. You know what I'm saying? Come up with a contest, whatever that is for you. Next. Peer pressure. You want to reinforce your culture? Put together some peer pressure. Then, like, oh, that sounds mean. It's not. Not if you care about them. Guess what I do with peer pressure? It works both ways. If you publish every single person on your team that's registered for your company convention, what's that automatically going to do? It's going to expose everybody on your team that has not registered for the company convention. It's going to embarrass them. And what I would do is give them fair warning. In seven days, I'm going to publish every single person on my team that's registered for the convention. I hope you're one of them. Peer pressure. Repetition and communication. Making sure that you're communicating. Ultimately... It's about culture. To reinforce what it is that you're going to do. If we talk about business plan and accountability, creating your business plan is critically important. Let's just give you some basics on how you can take all of this stuff and create your business plan. Create your strategy. Number one is figure out your event calendar. What's your event calendar? What's all the different pieces in it? Incentive trips, family trips, everything in your event calendar needs to go in there. If you're coming back to Recruiting Mastery, if you're going to be on leadership, all that stuff needs to go in there. Your personal work calendar. What are you going to do on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis? Choose the strategies and the campaigns to achieve your goals that we laid out. Choose them. Enroll your team in this game plan for 2019. Write this on paper, but it's not set in stone. The best plans I've ever had started off amazing, but then they change a little bit because... The group pushed back or this thing happened or the company announced something that was not in the plan I didn't know about. And pretty soon I had to make some adjustments. It's okay. Make some adjustments. Business plans are made to be adjusted. Plan, do, review. Make a plan, do it, and then review it. And then get yourself better and better and better throughout the year through this strategy. Create your business plan based upon all these campaigns. Accountability. Tell the entire world that you're going to do it. Tell the entire world that you're going to make that income. Tell the entire world that you're going to get to that rank. Tell the entire world that you're going to hit whatever goals that it is. Put yourself out there. Make yourself uncomfortable in order to be able to make that happen. 
Get a workout partner. Get somebody who won't let you slide, who won't let you lose days, who won't let you lose weeks, who won't let you lose months. Somebody who will pick you up when you're having a down day and somebody you can pick up when they're having a down day. Find a workout partner in this business that will not let you play small. Create an environment around you that supports your goals and your dreams for 2019. Create an environment that supports that. Anything that doesn't support it needs to wait. Don't even give them any energy until 2020. I'm serious. Create an environment. Create a series of rewards for achieving different milestones. We're good at penalizing ourselves. We're not so good at rewarding ourselves. Come up with something that if you do it, you get to that rank, you reward yourself with something nice. Something good happens. Something pleasurable happens. Whatever that happens to be, come up with a series of rewards for these different goals when you accomplish these milestones. Also come up with some pain. Some penalties if you don't. Some penalties if you don't. There's a website you can use if you want called stick.com, S-T-I-C-K-K.com. You can go put any goal you want there in there. You could put your credit card in there. And if you don't achieve your goal, that money goes to a cause that you don't like. <laughs> you can set a goal and send money to your ex if you don't hit your goal. Pick an organization that you despise and make sure you send the money to that organization if you don't hit your goal. If you're in a health organization, fitness and nutrition, you might hate Monsanto. Maybe you send $1,000 to Monsanto. If you're a Democrat, send $1,000 to the Republican Party. If you're a Republican, send $1,000 to the Democrat Party. Come up with something that's so unthinkable that you have to hit your goal. Because once you put your credit card in there, they're not going to listen to your whining and crying. They're going to send the money if you don't hit the goal. It's so great. So listen to me. All of this is designed to help you create your best year of your life. It's going to take some work, but I promise you it's worth it. 